You've all come to my channel once again. My name is DJ Donzi. And please, if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe. We started with the Time with the Legends program. We are done with it. And now, we are dealing with the study of Ghana's history. Now, from the ancient empire of Ghana, the British colony of the World Gold Coast, Ghana's history is fascinating and complex. Did you know, for example, that the word Ghana actually means warrior king in the Soninke language, which is still spoken by around 2 million people, or that Ghana's flag is heavily rooted in Pan-African symbolism and Ghana's struggle for independence? Never study the empire of Ghana. The Empire of Ghana formed in 380 when different tribes of the Soninke people were united under the first king, Dinga Sise. The Soninke people used the word Ghana, meaning warrior king, to refer to the king and the empire's enemies and allies subsequently began to refer to the region as Ghana. The empire was actually located northwest of present days Ghana in what is now Mauritania, Senegal and Mali but was gradually driven towards the coast by attacks from tribal groups in northern Africa who wanted the empire to convert to Islam. From 1100 AD, the empire weakened until it was eventually incorporated into the Mali Empire. In 1471, Portuguese traders landed in northern day Ghana and noticed that many of the people who lived there were wearing gold jewelry. This ushered in a new area of trade in gold, ivory and timber between Ghana, the Portuguese, Dutch, British and various neighboring Akan states, leading to Ghana becoming rich and powerful. Today, you can still see some of the many forts and castles which the European constructed along the Ghanaian coast to protect their trade interests. In the 1500s, the focus shifted to trading in slaves and slavery overtook gold as the main export with the arrival of Dutch, English, Danish and Swedish settlers during the 1600s. The slave trade became highly organized. Forts such as Cape Coast Castle were used to hold slaves awaiting transport to the Americas and millions of West Africans were captured and forcibly transported across the ocean. In the early 1800s, the British began applying pressure to try and curb the brutal slave trade. In 1807, the Slave Trade Act was signed which prohibited British subjects from trading in slaves right across the British Empire. The act did not abolish the practice of slavery, but it did encourage the British to pressure other nations to abolish their own slave trades. Slavery itself did not become illegal in Ghana until 1874 when the country was officially proclaimed a British crown colony and renamed the Gold Coast. The Ghanaian economy continued to grow through export of gold, cocoa and coffee. In 1957, the Gold Coast became the first Saharan colony to become an independent nation under President Kwame Nkrumah, who had led the fight for independence. Nkrumah was a Pan-African nationalist who saw Ghana's independence as crucial for the entire continent of Africa. As the Gold Coast officially gained independence, Nkrumah declared, our independence is meaningless until it is linked up with a total liberation of the African continent. More than 30 African countries 
followed suit and declared independence over the next decades. Following independence, the country was renamed Ghana as it was believed that many of the new nation's inhabitants were descended from the Soninke people who lived in the ancient empire of Ghana. Ghana's flag incorporates the Pan-African colors of red, yellow, green and black to represent political unity between all those who lived in Africa and features of the black stars as a symbol of Ghana's new freedom. The currency was also changed from the British West African pounds to Ghana cities. Fun fact, the word city is the Akan word for curry shell and these shells were used as currency until 1901. The curry shell aren't native to Ghana's water but were introduced as a form of currency in West Africa by traders from Arabia in the 1300s. After independence, Ghana's governments were plunged by corruption, coups, and military rule. For many years, Ghana was effectively a one-party state until 1981 when Ghana's new leader, Jerry Rawlings, vowed to put an end to this once and for all. In 1992, a new constitution was adopted which allowed for the formation of multiple political parties and the democratic system of Ghana. In fact, Ghana was recently ranked the second most peaceful country in Africa after Mauritius.